Tuesday night then, I know it was a long coach journey home. Um, how do you reflect on, on Tuesday night? It sounded like a, a positive performance. Well, as far as posi positive performance is concerned, you know, it's, it's so exasperating being a manager at this moment in time, you know, because you know, you know what you can achieve with the squad you've got. I don't want to... Fans can quite easily turn around and say, oh, he's, he's moaning about injuries again. I've never had an injury front like this before in my life, so uh, I can see 10% of your squad being unavailable. You know, I can see maybe another couple, four, four, maybe five, but nine at certain times. And and them all to be experienced players is more galling, you know what I mean? Seeing that the other night there, we, we huffed and puffed as far as we were a bit more solid than we've been, which was quite pleasing with the work we've done. But we probably didn't create enough, which we paid a penalty for. Uh, A.G. we didn't create enough going forward. Uh, so, you know, it's amazing what, what players are like. You know, I've worked away defensively to make us a bit more solid. Uh, so then we forget all about the, the offensive side of the team. Then we lose a goal. And lo and behold, Ted Maradona turned up. You understand what I mean? Yeah. All of a sudden, we're taking the ball. We're passing it. Oh, and I think there's been... If you look at the average age of the team, it would be quite scary at this minute in time. I think Fogden, Burden and Smithy and the goalie would be the four. The other seven would be 22 and under. So, you know, it's an inexperienced squad we're using at this minute in time. But we've got to try and get, get ourselves and get a win on the board as quickly as possible because I, the year the year I think I won the, the league with Plymouth, I never won a game in five. I think I had two draws and a, three defeats or something like that. And then we won the league by 100 points or whatever. But, you know, we've, we've got to get healthy as quickly as we can. You know, and, and, and we've got to appreciate now that we're going to have to, we're going to, have to dig deep and drag some results out. We don't want to be totally out off the off the pace by, by the time our players come back. It'd be really upsetting for for any manager or club to see that happen. So let's be clear: you would take a bad performance on Saturday if it means getting your first three points of the season. I would take a bad performance this Saturday. I'm saying uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful. It would be nice to be to have a, play well and, and win a, win a game, which would confidence would come soaring back in, into the team. So, you know, that's our aim. Um, just, as I said, the personnel is deciding that we, in the next couple of days is always pretty difficult. Because when you go up the training ground at this minute, you know, there's a few heads are down and it's uh, very quiet amongst the troops. But that's my job. I've got to rally them into the valley of death we go on Saturday again. And is it a team responsibility to score more goals rather than just look at the well, two strikers? You know, set pieces, we haven't, we haven't benefited from the work we've done so far. Something we're going to have to really work hard on again. The training ground is the key to all. We've just got to get on there. We have not been able to have a, a built week due to having midweek games all the time. And uh, so, you know, once once we get over the... Uh, I think we're over it now. Right? We've got the Barnet game coming up soon. Other than that, for the next month and a half after that, I think Accrington Stanley comes about the 20th. But we'll get plenty more double sessions done. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we've got to do. We've got to educate the, the young boys. At the same time, watch, we don't take out their legs, which I, I think I did against Bristol, with the work I'd done before on the Thursday and Friday. So we've just got to make sure, you know, that watch the temper the, the work that we do with the rest. But... You know, we've got to keep working and working and working on there. We'll get it right. And what, the dribs and drabs. Dixon's, this will be the last game he misses. So he'll be back, which is a wee, a wee bonus in kind. F Fogden's out for four weeks. He's broke two of his fingers. And, uh, you know, especially since one of them's a really bad break. So he's not going to be available for, for four weeks starting now. Which is another wee blow. Dolan comes back into. But we've we, we, this squad was 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 built from 
the end of last season to to even in the middle of the middle of the you know the run the first week we still were bringing players in. It's been built over a long a long period of time, and we've generally signed players at all sorts of levels of fitness. I think that's affected a lot of it. You know. But we are racing boys by it like Compton. Compton shouldn't be anywhere close to the first team at this minute in time. In an ideal world, in an ideal world, he would basically be on the bench, coming off and being a, a part player until he got himself totally fit. He had he'd be put on in the other night, and he 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 could possibly play on Saturday. Mm. So that's not ideal. You know, that's the kind of things that you know, when things are not going right. Oh no! I mean, West Falkton. I mean, that's just uh, yes, another blow. How do you stop yourself feeling sorry for yourself at this moment in time? Because it, it just seems to be one bad luck after another, doesn't it? And West, obviously, a key experienced player. Well, that's one. A, when a, every experienced player seems to be going down in a minute with something. But you know, if we let, if we keep going on about it and we keep worrying about it, and the young boys, you know, their confidence is low enough at this minute in time. It would just be nice, as I said, to kickstart our season with a, a good win whenever it comes just to, to get us going and at the same time the dribs and drabs of the, the experienced players coming back in again you never know you know the longer it goes on the young players might keep the young experienced players out mm-hmm. uh, that'd be nice for that to happen because that gives competition for places but you know me standing sitting here this minute and going this is the reason that's the reason that's the reason that's the reason and people then turn my reasoning into excuses. I'm just not prepared to go down that road. We have injuries, but we're still putting 11 out. Like, uh, the Bristol Rovers game was not to the standard we, I would have I would have liked. We were better the other night there. So, you know, in the end of the day, we've just got to get on the move. Get, get, just get some points on the board by hook or by crook. Um. Are you potentially going to add to your squad at all? I mean, I know there's a budget, um, but you, you obviously made another signing on, on Tuesday. Is that it now? Or um, are you always looking for bargains, perhaps, to add to the squad? Well, you know, Dolan comes back probably for, for uh, Wes, Wes uh, Fogden. So. But, you know, there is, we're still playing a striker in centre midfield. <laughs> mm. You know, finished up that scenario. So it's a bit... Uh, Patchy still, but we're trying to we're trying to f- fit pieces of, pieces of, you know round bits into square pegs, square holes. You know what I mean? That's what we're trying to do in this minute. The boy Bird's never played in any other position but centre forward. Tell I think when he was a kid he was a centre half actually, but you know he's been stuck, stuck he's been he's been quite happy to have a go. Mm-hmm. It's not ideal, you know what I mean? Then I chuck you one way up 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 the middle, you know. What I mean? And actually, you know, he didn't do too badly up there. But, you know, there's, you know, we're just, at this minute in time, we're, August has got us out. It's a much harder month than that. I think the most, hardest month we've, we've got this season is the first one. With the QPR and then obviously the teams that we're going to play are all compete, competing for promotion this year, out with the odd game, which was a disappointment. But... I could go, we could go on and on and on uh, about this, and I, d- I don't think it's appropriate. Fair enough, yeah. You forced me down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Luton. I watched them on Tuesday. Um, I, was surpri- I think they got a bit of stick, the players, as they left the field. At, I, was, I think high expectations for Luton to do well, so when they don't win matches, the supporters perhaps get on the players' back. Uh, the manager's an excellent manager, mm-hmm. a very experienced man. Uh, I class him as a friend. He's done very, very well. He took Luton. There's three or four different managers had a go. You know, but he, he went in there when they were in the conference and turned them around. And you know, I can only can only reiterate what a good manager he is. Saying that, I hope he's horrible. I hope his team's horrible on Saturday. But uh, yeah, they've got a lot of experienced players that can hurt you. Kyle Smith has come down, come down the leagues. You know he's got a goal scoring ratio, and Benson as well. Two of them could. McCourt's a playmaker, and then they, you know they've got some some good younger players. So uh, it's a very difficult game for us to go back, to go into. But we're at home. The expectation levels are, are dropping dramatically at this moment in time. So who knows? You know I think the important thing is we'll be all, we know. 
there was a bit of fight in it still because we hasn't been a game yet. I could say that we we haven't rolled the sleeves up and battled when when needed. So I think we've just got to keep working away at the things. You know, I think the overemphasis at times of the players taking because of the naivety. When I say I want balls dropped up to the strikers, if there's not, nothing else on, all of a sudden it becomes a hoof ball up to somebody up at this height. So we're, we're playing for crumbs. And they overemphasise what you're trying to say to them. Well, that's a normal circumstance of young players. So, you know, we've hopefully they don't take me literally what we worked on this morning. So, <laughs> But at the end of the day, it's, it's an important game for us. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Went with a three three five two or five three two, however you want to refer to it on Tuesday, Paul. Is that is that just fitting players into a system, or is that one you quite like? It's it's one of the ones I would I'd like to persevere with. Saying that, you know, I still believe that the back four is essentially what I've used all my life. You know, what I mean, it's what personally you've got sometimes fits around the system in this minute. The fit once it was three centre half, so it suited us to go into that kind of cell. Doesn't mean to say we'll we'll use that do that on Saturday, but uh, I I would like to have a uh, plan A and plan B, and maybe a wee plan C up, up my sleeve. But to be fair, I would like to per perfect two two systems, and uh, two styles of play as well. So, so it's uh, something we we'll, can only work on when when we've got everybody available. So we make sure that we, everybody knows what the story is. And Rich touched on their performance on Tuesday, but uh, Luton are yet to win a game this season. Is it the best time to play them? Yeah, Bristol say uh, Bristol Rovers. I, I don't think either. Uh, it's uh, it's always a dangerous time to play teams like that. You know they've got excellent players. He could probably field another eleven that would be very competent in the league. So you know it's hard to decide what he'll do formation wise. He played a system I didn't expect him to play in uh, uh, in midweek. So, you know, it's it's all swings and roundabouts at the minute. Luton will be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. Their personnel, their standard of their personnel, I'm sure, will make that happen. But, you know, if there is a good time to play somebody like Luton, yes, it would be in the scenario of them not winning a game. And now they've got a big fan base, probably being a lockdown with them, they expect the atmosphere to be a good one here. Yeah, well, it was very good against Bristol, Bristol Rovers. I was, and I'm sure Luton will bring a big support as well. Yeah, they're, they're a big club in this league, you know, so their expectation levels, that'll put a bit of pressure on the players. I hope they respond the wrong way instead of the, the right way to the, to the backing. Um, Press for our fans made the long trip up to York well I, I think it, I've made it plain you know there's 180 fans went up there it was an incredible they, they sang right through the whole game back to Team of the Hill which was fantastic I think the players went to them at the end of the game mm -hmm. you know, because they were appreciative of the hardy souls on the had because it rained from the start to the, to the end and they were still there at the end and I can't you know that's what football's all about yeah, fans are the key to it all, you know, and you, you're hoping you can put a performance. Like last year when I left, when I left Taunton, when I left MK Dons, I left myself with a, with a bad taste in my mouth, you know, and I felt felt the fans had been shortchanged. You know, and then, you know, we Exeter, we, we, give, we, we battled, you know, and the fans were with us all the way. York, it was the same, you know, if there was somebody going to score in the last 15 minutes, it was going to be us. You know, so when I look at it that way, you know, I've only got admiration for them and long may it last.